Had a good day at school, have you? Not bad. All right. Hey, you two. Your dad's had to go into town after a job. And Mr Braithwaite's had to take Mrs Braithwaite down to the village. Only she told me to tell you two to keep out of mischief. Message received and understood, is it? Message received and understood, sir. And if you want something to keep you out of mischief, you can give me a hand. What doing, Harry? I'm having a good scout round for a big ball of string. I brought it out here with me. I mean, I promised to tie up some poles from Mr Braithwaite. How many strings gone missing? Here, it weren't you two as had it, was it? Of course not. The boy had just got back from school. You saw us come in. Yeah, well, I believe you. Thousands wouldn't. But if you do find it, it's mine, right? You better go and see Wurzel. Yeah. He's gone off on his travels again. We better go and look for him. He could be anywhere. Look, I'm going to play in the barn till Mrs. Braithwaite gets back. Wait, wait for me. Let's keep dancing in here somewhere. Oh, I know that's what it is. Ah, oh, darn it, I don't reckon I'll manage without it. Let's go up and go turn up soon. Rock's on, you didn't search it, it's no mistake. I'm better off without it. Mr. Gummidge! Wurzel! You can soak as much as you want, but we know you're up there. Oh. I ain't talking to you pesky kids. So you got no call to come bothering round me. We haven't done anything wrong. That's half your trouble not doing anything. I've been looking for you three all the afternoon. We aren't three, we're two. And anyway, we had to go to school. Two started. Oh, you never told me nothing about going to school. You ought to known I would have needed you. Thought that was obvious. We don't know anything's wrong unless you tell us, Mr. Gummidge. Oh, all right then. Come on up. I'll tell you what's the matter. I come up here to get the bit of new straw to put me left leg on, on a kind of bit of damp and, and field mice and the old stuff in. And all of a sudden, my right arm drops off. I can't find it anywhere. Have a look. I've searched everywhere I have. I can't find it. Wait. Well. You were sitting on it. Your hand's got heavy string in it. Well, of course it has. You can't stuff a leg without some string to tie it off with, can you? Harry's been looking for it everywhere. He's very cross. Yeah, wait till he loses his arm. Then he'd really have something to complain about. Especially if there's no one there to help him look for it. Go on, help me and put it in there and help me. That's it, in there. Push the stick off. Didn't you ever have to go to school, Mr Gummy? Never had no need to, young woman. That was because I had this very clever head once, but taught me all manner of things. Where did you get it from, Mr Gummy? Well, for Christmas present, I got given by the crow man. That it was always hanging around schools, I did. We're picking up all kinds of facts. Could it do mathematics? Well, I expect it could, if I knew what mathematics was. You know, adding things up and taking them away. Oh, I could do that all right. Uh, two sheep and three sheep is five sheep. Oh, fantastic. Uh, four taties and five taties is eight taties. How's that? Mm, near enough. Could it do tables? Well, to be strictly honest, we're never much good on tables. Nor on chairs. Uh, matter of fact, it weren't much good adding up any kind of furniture. Three tables and five tables I've tried adding up. Uh, but I keep coming up with the answers of wardrobe. So I'll give up on furniture with it. But with sheep and taters, it were red hot. What happened to it? I lost it. No, I tell a liar. I hid it. I hid that edge somewhere safe. I didn't want to lose it, see, on account of it being so pesky clever. <laughs> As a matter of fact, it was that head itself that thought of its own hiding place. Trouble was, I've never had another head since it was clever enough to find it. Well, maybe if you went to school like us, Mr Gummidge, you'll be just as clever. How many times do I have to dang well tell a young woman I don't need to go to school? <laughs> Not with a clever head like I got in the way. Well, what good is it to you if you don't know where it is? Come along, children. Tea is ready. We've got to go now, Mr. Gummidge, but we'll look for you tomorrow. And we'll take this. Yeah, but maybe you'll find me, maybe you won't. That depends on whether I chooses to see you three. We're two, not three. 
Come on, Sue. Let's find out what's for tea. Okay. Proper smarty pants that lad thinks he is. Wait till I find my clever head. I'll teach him a thing or three. Dang me if I don't. Hey, you two. You better watch your step today. I should be keeping an eye on you. How do you mean, Dad? Oh, Mr. Braithwaite's managed to find me a job this afternoon, fixing some stakes on the school roof. So I'll be looking out for you. Cheerio, then. Bye, Dad. Bye. So behave yourselves. Go on, clear off! Dang pesky banging. How am I supposed to find a missing head with all that stabbing going on? <laughs> oh, did I hide it here or did I hide it somewhere else? Ah. Yeah. <laughs> No right to go banging about out there while respectable scarecrows is crawling about underneath. I just no part to the coin, you dirty old son. Good. Harry, morning, Mr. Peters. Where's that dog of yours? Well, she's back in the house. I just seen her. You sure she ain't just thrown this clod of earth through my caravan window? Oh no, Mr. Peters. That dog don't throw earth. Well down outside the big sty, Harry. You go and give it to him when you finish here. Right, you are, Mr. Braithwaite. I'll just finish these. Right, all. Wonder if that dang dead tummy to hide it inside the pig sty. Could have done. Ah, no, I couldn't. Ah, I was too dang clever by half. Ah, it was a turnip head. But not dang well, then there are pigs would have had it up. I could have got it in inside a bucket, though. The turnip head would fit just snug inside a bucket. Never did this one. Just what you mean, missus. Here, that laundry basket. That looks like the sort of place that might hide a turnip head. Those kids. Oh, impossible. They're at school. Oh, that's it. At school. Dang me, I'm sure in it. My dad was so fond of learning things. He wouldn't have hidden himself anywhere else after that school. Thank you. 
work I set you. No talking now, I mean it. Get on with your work. Otherwise, I'll keep you all in for extra time after school, and I mean it. Dang me. I know it was here somewhere, it's about. I've looked for her everywhere. In the school, in the fireplace, up the chimney. The chimney. That's it. That's where I left it. Oh, that's him. I know there was up here somewhere it's about. I wonder if it's as clever as it always was. Whether the rain's got into it a bit, made it go all sort of soggy. Ah. Oh, ah. that's it. <sighs> now I'll show those pesky kids what being clever really means. That. Yeah. Ah. Oh dear. Right, come on. Up we go. <laughs> <laughs> Your work. Oh, oh dear, dear. Dang, dang side out of getting down. It is getting up. Oh. Huh? Oh, that's better. Oh, well, now I'm up here. May as well try me old thinking it out. Here it goes. Uh, two times two is four, three times two is six, eight, eight is sixty-four, fourteen times twelve is hundred and sixty-eight. Oh, ah. <laughs> Calcutta is the capital city of West Bengal, has an established population of three million one hundred and forty-one thousand. It works! It works! <laughs> Say, my man, you up there? Ah, uh, in a right angle triangle, the square of the side of the hypotenuse is equal to the sum of the squares on the other two sides. All right. I say, do you hear me? You there? Tramp! Ah, oh, don't interrupt me now, missus. I'm trying out my new head. None of your cheek. I'll have you now. I'm a member of the teaching staff at this school. I demand to know what you're doing up there. I shall also require a satisfactory answer. Well, I'll give you a satisfactory answer, missus. I'll give you as many answers as you want. Provided, of course, I get a satisfactory question first off. Ah, go on, ask me a question about history. Don't be ridiculous. The square root of 7,469 is 97. The city of Johannesburg was founded in 1866 and now has an estimated population of 655,000. Are you going to come down from there at once or am I to send for the policeman? I'll come down, all right, missus, after you've asked me a question. Go on, ask me something historical. I'll do no such thing. Suit yourself. Then I'm stopping where I am. Oh, very well. Anything to put a stop to this nonsense. In what year did Queen Elizabeth I ascend the throne? 1588. Ask me another. Good heavens. Uh, Henry V? Henry V, born 1387, came to the throne 1413, defeated the Frogs of Agincourt in 1415, and died in 1422. Ask me another. This is absolutely unbelievable. Go on, ask me another. Try me on something else. Geography, if you like. I demand what it is. Geography, nuclear physics, shepherd and sheep, whatever takes your fancy, Mrs. Um, name me the capital city of Australia. Ah, uh, too easy, Mrs. Canberra. Ask me another. Ah, I have one now you won't answer. Where is Timbuktu? Timbuktu, central Mali and central Africa. Estimated population 10,000. That's not counting the scarecrows. Ask me another. This is absolutely incredible. I must inform the headmaster at once. Now, you stay there. Don't go away. I shall be back soon. Oh, you daft old beezum. I ain't likely to go anywhere, am I? Not if I can't get down from off this roof, I am. Hello? Oh, Headmaster! Uh, may I crave a moment of your most valuable time? Well, if 
it is only a moment, Miss Jameson, and if it is important. I do have your own class for the next period of general knowledge, you know. And you, I fancy, are already late for your gym class. I'm sure you'll think it important, Headmaster, when I tell you that I have discovered a genius on the school roof. Beg your pardon, Miss Jameson? A genius, Headmaster. A broken-down tramp, maybe, but a tramp who has obviously known far, far better times. He has a remarkable brain, Headmaster, and is sitting on the school roof now, even as I speak to you. Miss Jameson, I know about the man on the roof. He's no tramp. He is father of the two new pupils, John and Sue. He's replacing broken tiles. Then he was meant for far, far better things, Headmaster. Be he tramp or workman, it matters little. I can only repeat he has the most remarkable brain. An IQ that is simply phenomenal. Are you sure of this, Miss Jameson? He invited me to test him out, Headmaster. I bombarded him with questions of all kinds on all manner of subjects, and he answered every one. History, geography, mathematics. That man is an authority on every subject from nuclear physics to sheep shearing. Are you absolutely sure of this? I tell you, Headmaster, I've just had first-hand experience. Any question on any subject. <laughs> Of course, it's not necessarily a sign of genius, you know. Uh, Mr. Peters probably has a photographic mind and unusually retentive memory. Still, the feet as good as you say. Oh, better, Headmaster. Much, much better. Oh, thank you, Miss Jameson. I'll handle this. Any question, you say? On any subject, Headmaster. Julie reminds me of swimming in sun. I say, uh, you there, Mr. Peters? Oh, yes, Mr. Foster. Come down, would you? Uh, down, Mr. Foster. Uh, yes, please, if it's not too much trouble. Uh, but I haven't finished these slates yet. Uh, well, uh, never mind the tiles. Uh, I have another little task for you, one rather more suited to your talents. Oh, but... Is it electrical work? Oh, you'll see, you'll see. Oh, careful! <laughs> Don't want a man of your qualifications to have a nasty accident, do we? Oh, something I'll do for you, Mr. Foster. There is indeed, Mr. Peters, there is indeed. Now, uh, just follow me. Uh, Set down, children. Pay attention. Now, uh, today I have a bit of a surprise for you, but uh, first of all, I want you all to say good afternoon to Mr. Peters. Good afternoon, Mr. Peters. How do, kids? <laughs> now, now, today for a change, I'm going to sit back and let you ask the questions. And uh, Mr. Peters here is going to give us all the answers. Hey. Crikey, crikey Moses. Uh, Mr. Peters is an expert on general knowledge, right, Mr. Peters? Well, I wouldn't go so far as to say that. Come, come now, no false modesty. Uh, Mr. Peters' children has what is known as a photographic memory. He can answer questions on any subject under the sun. Uh, possibly questions about the sun itself, eh? Me, Mr. Foster? Yeah. Now, first question. Uh, easy one, for starters. Mm -hmm. In what year did Columbus discover America? Uh, was it uh, 1066? <laughs> well, that is funny, yes. Serves me right for asking such an easy one. Um, now, seriously this time, Mr. Peters, what are the principal exports of uh, Thailand? Repeat the question, please. Yes, certainly, yes. What are the principal exports of Thailand? Yes, well, uh, let's uh, try something a little nearer home this time, shall we? Um, where is the Acropolis situated? The Acropolis, yeah, yeah. If you rescue him, I think we'd better. I've got a question. Who won the cup final in 1953? Oh, that's uh, Blackpool beat Bolton Wanderers 4 3. Stanley Morton's got a hatchet for Blackpool, and Stanley Matthews got his first cup with his medal. Who won the World Cup in 1962? Uh, the World Cup in 1962 was played in Chile and Czechoslovakia beat Yugoslavia by three goals to one. Who won the Football League Championship in the season of 1968 and 1969? Uh, Leeds United and Liverpool the runners-up. <laughs> yes, 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 very good, but uh, we don't want all the questions to be about football, do we? Uh, now, someone give us another subject. Which horse won the Grand National in 1964? 
Team Spirit, owned by Mr. Jay Goodman, trained by Fort Wallin and ridden by Willie Robinson, starting price 18 to 1. What happened then, Wurzel? Did you find a clever head? Hello, you three kids. We didn't find it. Well, that's where you're wrong, Master Clever Clogs, because I did find it, see? And I've had it on. Did it know a lot of things? That there in my girl knows everything there is to be known. As a matter of fact, that there in knows a sight too much. Where is it? Ed. I had to get rid of it, you see. Fair gave me an headache, it did. Spouting all them facts and figures. But it couldn't give you a headache. It could only do that to itself. You're not so smart, young fella, my lad. Because as it happens, it gave me an headache in my stomach. Little Robin Redbreast said, still whirling round and round. Where did you hide it this time, Mr. Gummidge? Somewhere safe. Even I don't know where. Only the head knows that. But I ain't going looking for it never again. As far as I'm concerned, wherever it's it, it's stopping it. Harry? Yes, Mr. Brightwick? How many gallons of milk have we had so far this week? Let me see now. We had uh, 92 gallons on Sunday, 90 gallons on Monday, 95 yesterday, and 87 today. And what's that in total? Well, uh, um, 364 gallons. Uh, 364 gallons. Oh, what's that in litres? Um, 1,654. 1,654.744. Thanks, Harry. You're improving. You're very welcome, Mr. Braithwaite. Hey, who said that? Thank you.